the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And tonight, Kraft, makers and importers of the world's favorite cheese, wants to tell you about a real triumph of cheese making. It's Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese. Already sliced and sealed by Kraft for your convenience. Natural Swiss cheese is the kind with the holes. And Kraft Natural Swiss cheese has what we call heart of the cheese goodness all through. We're sure this delicious cheese and handy packages will become one of your favorite foods. Try it soon. Kraft Natural Swiss cheese. When a girl is school principal in a town the size of Summerfield, there aren't many eligible escorts she can depend on. So perhaps I should count Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, the local water commissioner, a blessing. And I would, except it's getting so I can't even depend on him. Oh, he's late again. There he is. Well, he can just wait until I powder my nose for the third time. All right, all right. I'm coming. Hello, Irene. Well, hello. Come in, Throckmorton. Yeah, thank you. You why didn't you answer the door? You kept me waiting, standing out there in the cold. You don't know how close you are being out in the cold. Hey. What's that? Do you realize you're a half hour late? You, well, I was downtown and wanted to phone you. So? You know, I stopped at the corner phone booth, but I didn't have a dime. Yeah, I didn't want to lose the booth, so I gave a fellow 50 cents to get me some change, and he never came back. <laughs> Crock, Morton, you're so gullible. Yeah. I should have been suspicious when he stopped and asked me for a cup of coffee. Oh, good heavens. But I'm here at long last. You may not last long. <laughs> what about last night? You know, I had to work late at the office. Yeah, I just forgot to call you. Yeah, I know it was a terrible thing to do. Yeah, but... I get it. After water, I come first. <laughs> No, I... And mean... last Monday, you said you were going to pick me up promptly at 4.30. I passed up three rides and finally had to walk. Sorry, but I thought I'd explain. I was helping a little old lady home with her packages. Where did she live? Cheyenne, Wyoming? <laughs> <laughs> Irene, it'll never happen again. I promise. If it does, it'll be the last time. <laughs> Irene... Don't grin at me, you big moose. <laughs> Well, better late than never. A moose in your parlor is worth two in the bush. I'll have you know, I don't have to beat the bushes for dates. Clarence Olson has been calling me every day for weeks. You, that pushy intern. Every time I turn my back, he's ringing your doorbell. He's a very nice man. And you'd better watch it, or I'll give a certain city official back to the city. Oh, <laughs> no, Irene, you're not pretty when you pout. You smile now. Be a gorgeous self. You aren't going to talk me out of my nasty mood. I've been working on it. You will. One more offense and we're through. Kaput. Finished. Yeah, I get the idea. I never keep you waiting. Well, let's get on to the movie. Well, wait till I fix my hair and change my purse. Hey. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> cool to me last night. By George, I'll have to watch it from now on. Say, look at those fancy compacts in Petey's window. Think I'll buy one of those and take it to Irene as a peace offering tonight. Hello, Petey. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Yeah, Petey, are those good compacts in your window? Well, they're good and compact. <laughs> well, I can use one of those. They're for ladies, Mr. Gildersleeve. I know. The compacts contain powder, rouge, and a mirror. I'm sure you don't want to look in the mirror. All right, Phoebe. If you're interested in improving your appearance, I have an eyebrow pencil for your mustache. 
Or a pair of scissors if you care to get rid of it. I'm not interested in improving my appearance. Well, everybody to his own taste, said the old lady. She kissed the cow. <laughs> oh. I just came in here to buy a compact for Miss Henshaw. Yeah, well. She's been a little upset with me for keeping her waiting when we have a date. Hmm, must be something in the air, you know. Mrs. Peavy and I had a little tip. Oh? Maybe I should take her a gift. Well, take her a compact, Peavy. Now, this is a real feud. I think I should take her a whole remedy chest. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you and Mrs. Peavy? Nothing the matter with me. It's Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> well, there's nothing to laugh at. We're getting a new parrot. Well, I thought you had a parrot. We have, but Mrs. Peavy thought it needed a companion because it looked so sad. Yeah, I see. And I told her when we bought it, it was a sad-looking parrot. <laughs> you don't want another one in the house, huh? Oh, it isn't that, but Mrs. Peavy wants to name it after one of her relatives. I told her we had enough funny-looking visitors from her side of the family without getting one with feathers. <laughs> you told her that? And I considered it quite amusing, but she didn't. Then we got into personalities, and I put my foot down. What'd she do? She put hers down on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then one word led to another. What else did you say? We only got in one word, and then I lit out for the pharmacy. <laughs> well, that's too bad, Peavy. First thing you know, you and Mrs. Peavy won't be speaking. We're hardly speaking now. Oh, my goodness. I'd like to get things smoothed out, but I, I'm not going to be the first to make the move. But will you be kind enough to answer the phone, Mr. Gildersleeve? Me? Well, this is your drugstore, Peavy. Yeah, but I, I think that's Mrs. Peavy on the other end. She might just want to hang up on me again. <laughs> Does she do that? Twice this morning. Well, I'll talk to her and fix up everything. Uh, don't you try to fix anything, Mr. Gildersleeve. Just answer the phone. Yeah, I know what I'm doing, Peavy. Hello, Peavy's Pharmacy. Oh, hello, Mrs. Peavy. Now, uh, don't hang up. This is Commissioner Gildersleeve. Yes, he's here. But I'd like to talk to you as a friend. I'm sorry to hear you and Peavy have a slight misunderstanding. You're all right. Big misunderstanding. But my suggestion is... But... 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 I am not a Budinsky. She, she hung up on me. Yeah, you sure fixed things. Now, Peavy, I was only trying to iron out your problems. Well, you iron out your own problems, and I'll iron out mine, Budinsky. How do I get into these things? Hi, Aunt. Hello, Leroy. You're home early. Yeah, I have a dinner date. How about a game of basketball? Oh, I haven't time, my boy. Just a game of 21? No, no. 11? Sorry. 7? 5? One? Leroy, I haven't time to shoot baskets. Want to pass me the ball so I can shoot one? I told you I have a dinner date. Dinner? The sun hasn't even gone down. Well, it'll never come up again for me if I'm late at Irene's. Miss Henshaw read the riot act to you, huh? Well, I just don't dare be late again. Don't let her run over you, Unc. Why don't you get revenge? Revenge? Sure. Take me out of school. I'm willing to make the sacrifice. <laughs> yes, yes. Sorry, I'm in a hurry, Leroy. That's okay. Hello, Bertie. Hello, Miss Gilsey. You home early. Yes. Uh, Bertie, do you have my blue serge ready? Yes, I just took the spots out of it. Well, I'll go put it on. Miss Gilsey, if you put it on now, you smell like a gas station. Oh? Yes, sir. Somebody live to drive up to you and say, fill her up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to take that chance, Bertie. I can't be late at Irene's. She's already upset with me about past performances. Yes, sir. But if you just take me out to dinner, you've got a lot of time. Yes, but I've been doing some thinking. i better drop by Mr. Peavy's house. Is Peavy sick? No. No, he and Mrs. Peavy had a little spat, and maybe I made it worse when I talked to Mrs. Peavy over the phone. Yes, sir. So I think I'll run by on my way to Irene's and straighten it out. Yes, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Peavy ain't getting along? It's just a family squabble. Oh, a family squabble. What family squabble? This doesn't concern you, Leroy. Who does it concern? The family concern. When I saw him this morning, Bertie, 
He said he left the house in a huff. Yes. Who left the house in a huff? Uh, Leroy, I'm talking to Bertie. Well, talk to me. Who left in a huff? Stop interrupting me. Anyway, Bertie, when I was there, the phone rang. Yes, sir. Whose phone? And neither one would talk to the other. Would neither one give in? Well, tell me either one of the neither ones, and I'll guess the other one. <laughs> Confounded Leroy. Well, what goes on? Never mind. I'm trying to straighten out an argument that started with two parrots. Now, excuse me, I have to go put on my blue serge. He's putting on his blue serge to referee a fight between two parrots? <laughs> I'm not due at Irene's for half an hour. I have plenty of time to talk to Mrs. Peavy and talk her out of her little feud with Peavy. Yeah, I'll park here in the alley. She sees my car. She may not let me in. Maybe I shouldn't even go to the door. The outside basement door is open. Why not I go down and pretend I'm inspecting the hot water heater? She'll hear me, come down to see what's going on, and I can casually bring up the subject. <laughs> You're sly, Gildersleeve. Dark down here. Stuffy, too. Smells like gasoline. Oh, that's my suit. Oop! Shovel. I must be close to the coal bin. I'm in it. I'm going to a lot of trouble, but Peavy's a good friend, and I feel a little obligated to get them on good terms again. What's that? Oh, Mrs. Peavy's coming outside. I've attracted her attention already. I wish I knew where the light switch is, so it looked like I'm busy with the hot water heater. Hey, what's going on? She closed the basement door. She locked me in. Whoop, where's she going? Mrs. Peavy! Mrs. Peavy! She's getting in her car. She's driving away. Mrs. Peavy, come back! Mrs. Peavy, stop! I've got a date! I've got a date with a coal bin. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. The world's happiest hostess is the hostess with no snack problems. She's the hostess who knows exactly what she's going to serve and how. And what she serves for that snack might well be Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese with crackers and her guests' favorite beverages. Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese is a delicious treat. What's more, this Natural Swiss Cheese comes already sliced and sealed by Kraft. So it's quick and easy to serve. Natural Swiss Cheese is that old favorite kind with the holes, you know. And now Kraft brings you natural Swiss cheese with exceptional goodness. Heart of the cheese goodness all through it. What does that mean? Well, in wheels of natural Swiss, the cheese at the center or heart of the wheel has a better flavor and finer texture than the cheese at the outside edges of the wheel. But Kraft natural Swiss has this perfect nut sweet flavor and fine, tender texture all the way through it. Kraft natural Swiss cheese has heart of the cheese goodness in every bite. This fine-tasting cheese comes sliced and sealed by Kraft, sealed airtight in handy half-pound packages, so there are never any dried edges. And Kraft Natural Swiss has no rind, so there's no waste. Make it a habit to keep a package or two of this exceptionally good Natural Swiss cheese on hand for all kinds of snacks. Enjoy it in sandwiches, and surprise the folks at dinner some night soon and serve it with fruit for dessert. Get Kraft Natural Swiss cheese with heart of the cheese goodness all through... For your eating pleasure. Sliced and sealed by Kraft for your convenience. Well, where is that Brock Morton? Oh, he's late again. I thought I made it clear to that man the next time would be the last time. Let me at the phone. I'll spell it out in such simple, stark terms it'll get through to even his brain, wherever he hides it. I did it. Okay, Bertie. 
Miss Gilsey's residence. Bertie, this is Miss Henshaw. Oh, hello, Miss Henshaw. Is Mr. Gildersleeve there? No, ma'am, he is with you. He is not. Come again? He's supposed to be here, but I haven't seen him. Well, he was anxious to get over there, I know that. Oh? I cleaned his suit and he was in a hurry to get there, even if the suit smelled like gasoline. Well, he's vanished into thin air. Maybe he lit a cigar and his suit blew up. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't beat the cigar to it. Yes, ma'am. You want to leave a message for the water commissioner? I just want to leave the water commissioner high and dry. Yes, ma'am. I'll give him the message. You don't mind if I reword it, do you? I don't care what you tell him, as long as he understands that I never want to see him again. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye, Bertie. Goodbye, Miss Henshaw. Oh, Mr. Gilsey. What's wrong, Bertie? Miss Gilsey ain't showed up at Miss Henshaw's boiling like a tea kettle. Yeah? That poor Mr. Gilsey. Well, he should have been there long ago. Well, he said he's going to stop at Mr. Peavy's house. Maybe it's taking him a long time to patch up that quarrel. Maybe Mrs. Peavy hit him over the head with a skillet. <laughs> well, if Mr. Gilsey's laid out, I know he's glad he's got on his blue serge. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we better call Mrs. Peavy, Bertie. That's a good idea. Oh, Mr. Gilsey. Yeah, I hear the phone ringing upstairs. Well, I can't answer it down here in the basement. What a helpless feeling. Peavy's would be the cautious type. Lock every door in the house. Yeah, Mrs. Peavy probably just went to the market. I wonder how Irene is taking this. Zeke. Pretty dark down here, but I can see the handwriting on the wall. She'll ditch me for Olsen Shore. Wish it was a bigger light bulb down here. Maybe if I open the furnace door, I can see better. Oh! <laughs> Hit my head on the furnace pipe. Better sit down before I get knocked down. Ew. Oop! And they call this soft coal. <laughs> oh, well. TV has to come home to dinner soon. Gosh, you mean Mrs. Peavy hasn't seen Unc? No, Leroy, I just talked to her. She's at the hairdresser's. I'm taking her out to dinner tonight. Yeah? You're living it up, huh? Well, Mrs. Peavy and I had a little misunderstanding, so... I'm treating her to a permanent way with seafood dinner and a night on the town. We won't be home until late. Maybe I should give Miss Henshaw a permanent wave. How's that? She sure is sore at him for not showing up. Good evening, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Dr. Olson. Hey, Roy. Hi. Have you seen anything of Uncle Dr. Olson? No. As a matter of fact, I haven't been looking for him. Well, have you checked the office, Leroy? Now, he isn't at the office. I think I'll go back home and see if Bertie's heard from him. Well, don't worry. He'll turn up. Sure. I'm too big to lose. <laughs> Good night, Leroy. Good night. Good night. Gildersleeve lost, I hope. <laughs> well, he's unaccounted for at the moment. Say, do you suppose he's so afraid I'll steal his girl he jumped off the dam into the reservoir? <laughs> well, I doubt if he jumped off the dam into the reservoir. The ice is a foot thick. Oh, Gildersleeve could break through. <laughs> You don't seem to be too concerned about Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, I am, I am. Why, if anything should happen to Throckmorton, I'd simply die. Laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks well of you, too. I'm only kidding, Mr. Peavy. Oh, my, yes. Yeah. To show you how worried I am about poor Throckmorton, I'm going to conduct a one-man search for him. You don't say. Yes. In the first place I'm going to look is at Irene's apartment. Well, he had a date with her. If he isn't there, I'll take Irene to dinner at the Summerfield Grill and look for him there. I doubt if he'd appreciate that. No, I'm only thinking of him, Mr. Peavy. If we don't find him at the grill, we may have to look for him at a dark movie. <laughs> You're a true friend. Yes, indeed. And I won't give up. If Rock Morton isn't in the movie, I'll take Irene back to that cozy little apartment and faithfully wait for him there. <laughs> a 
see what time it is. 11 o'clock. And Peavy's aren't home yet. If I can get out of this basement, I could still make it to Irene's. Yeah. At least I had a little dinner. Mrs. Peavy's strawberry preserves and canned dill pickles. <laughs> Pee. And there's Peavy's car. They're home at last. Night owls. Yeah, they're coming up to the house now. Peavy! Help! Peavy! Well, to get some attention. That good old Peavy, he heard me. Come out, whoever you are, and come out with your hand up. Over. You don't have a gun, do you? And I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> It's me, Gildersleeve. Now advance and be recognized. Peavy, put down that crowbar. Mr. Gildersleeve, what are you doing in my basement? Oh, Mrs. Peavy accidentally locked me in. Well, you still haven't explained what you were doing down there. I came by to try to patch up your little tiff with Mrs. Peavy. No, I've already done that. It cost me $10.82. <laughs> Well, I've got to rush over and explain to Irene now. It's a little late, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's never too late to make up with Irene. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, her light is still on. It's not too late to talk to her. She's going to be pretty angry. She said she'd give me only one more chance, and I've used it. Shall I ring the doorbell or just knock softly? Oop, somebody's coming out. I better hide behind the shrubs. Oh, it was nice of you to take me to dinner, Clarence. Uh, <laughs> that sneaky Olson. What's he doing here? Oh, it was my pleasure, Irene. In any emergency, Dr. Olson is ready to operate. <laughs> what a corny intern. Uh, I don't care if Throckmorton never shows up. I can't understand his completely ignoring our day tonight. You are not being ignored, my dear. Well, you've been very sweet. And I'll continue to be. You can just forget that old moss-covered water bucket. Oh, Clarence. Why, right, George, I'd step out and punch him in the nose. It wouldn't look like I'm eavesdropping. <laughs> Irene, have I told you you're very lovely? Mm, you told me when you first came over tonight. You told me at dinner. And you told me at the movie. You better watch it or I'll tell him. <laughs> oh, when I get home tonight, I'll, I'll phone you and tell you again. Hmm. He's sickening. <laughs> well, it's getting late. You better give me back my hand and run along. Oh, no, not yet, Irene. Why doesn't he let go? If I had a bean shooter, I'd bean him. <laughs> Can I see you again tomorrow night? No, I haven't any other plans. Whoop. Till tomorrow night, then? If he tries to now, kiss her out. Oh, Clarence. Yeah, a girl, Irene. Oh, I can wait. A doctor has lots of patience, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're so clever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Good night, Irene. Good night. And at last, he's leaving. And now's my chance. something, Clarence? Irene, it's Throckmorton. Oh, it's you. Where have you been all night? In a basement. A basement? You shouldn't have bothered to come out. <laughs> no, Irene, don't slam the door. Give me a chance to explain. Throckmorton, I don't want to hear any more of your bargain basement explanation. <laughs> Look, I went over to Peavy's house to patch up a quarrel and Mrs. Peavy locked me in the basement. Well, good for Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> no, Irene, I've been there all night. Peavy just came home and let me out. All I had for dinner was jam and pickles. <laughs> oh, Rock Morton, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. You, you mind trying making me a cup of coffee? Well, it's awfully late, but come on in. Of course, I said I'd never see you again. you glad you changed your mind. Sit down. I think there's some warm coffee left. Had a caller, have you? Yes, um, Clarence Olson was kind enough to substitute for you tonight. Second team, huh? You know you were headed for the scrubs, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I shouldn't try to help people. Why should I go out of my way to settle somebody else's quarrel? I should have let the Peavies have their tip. 
Look at the trouble it brought me. Now, Throckmorton, I realize you were only trying to do good, and I forgive you. Then everything's all right between you and me. Everything's all right. You wonderful. <laughs> good to be out of the doghouse. <laughs> I can't imagine Mr. and Mrs. Peavy in an argument. What was it about? Oh, something silly. Let's see, what was it about? Oh, yes, I remember. It seems the Peavys are getting another parrot, and Mrs. Peavy wanted to name it after her side of the family. Oh, for heaven's sake. Versus if it's a girl parrot, she wants to call it Bertha May. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? Oh, I don't know. Huh? What's so ridiculous about Bertha May? It just sounds silly. <laughs> Bertha happens to be my middle name. Zeke. Out of the basement and back in the doghouse. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Give the Icebox Raiders at your house a special treat. Keep a package of Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese on hand for their hungry moments. Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese has heart of the cheese goodness in every bite. And for your convenience, this good cheese with the holes now comes from Kraft already sliced and sealed in half-pound packages. Kraft Natural Swiss is perfect for quick snacks and easy suppers and lunches. Try it soon. Wonderful tasting Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese. <laughs> Now, Irene, Bertha has always been a favorite name of mine. We've had some Berthas in our family. In fact, if I remember correctly, I had a great aunt named Bertha. Then why did you say it sounded silly? You, I didn't mean the name was silly. It's such a fine name, it's silly to waste it on a parrot. Hmm. <laughs> Rock Morton, I guess I'll never be able to stay angry with you. You're good. There's another cup of coffee in the pot, Irene. Shall we split it? Well, it's a little late. But why not? Yeah, that's the spirit. Oh, uh, that's Bobby Clarence. He was going to phone me. Oh? Hello? Hi, Irene. Here, let me have the phone. But Morton. I told you I'd call to tell you how lovely you are. Oh, some flattery will get you nowhere. <laughs> You're asleep. <laughs> Good night, folks. Great show is played by Willard Waterman. Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Joanne Jordan, Lillian Randolph, George Neese, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of craft prepared mustard at your food store. <laughs> Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho on the NBC Radio Network. Mm -hmm.